Holiday Plus. Need a break? Choose from these three wonderful holidays. A. Mountain Lodge. Location, a unique wildness retreat on the edge of the World Heritage listed National Z Park and only 5 kilometers from the sea. Price, $330. Number of nights, 1. Daily meals included in package, mountain buffet, breakfast plus free soft drinks always available. Comments, free Anuig, free talks in the evening, free open-air tennis courts, horse riding optional extra. Transport to from airport, self-drive auto 1 hour 15 minutes or bus 3 times slash week approximate 2 hours. B. Pelican Resort. Location, a true coral island, right on the Great Barrier Reef, swim straight from the beak. Price, $580. Number of nights, 4. Daily meals included in package hot breakfast plus beach picnic lunch, plus set for course dinner. Comments, refurbishment resort, will close for May. Free minibus trip around island. Plane flights to Wilson Island only $50. Transport to from airport, half an hour by minibus. C. Kodar Lodge. Location, a blend of casual sophistication and rich rainforest. Ambience for those over 25. Price, $740. Number of nights, 4. Daily meals included in package, tropical breakfast. Picnic lunch, optional extra. Comments, oldest living rainforest. Free bikes and tennis courts, horse riding extra. Transport to, from airport, 10 minutes, by taxi. Asterisk price, per person, per package, twin share. Sydney Trail College. At this college, we recommend the multi-plan policy. Travel insurance requirements. As this course includes a total of three months travel outside Australia, travel insurance is compulsory. If you are sick or have an accident in Australia, your medical bills will be fully covered. However, you cannot assume that everything will be covered overseas, so please read the following requirements carefully. 1. Medical. Australia has reciprocal medical arrangements with the governments of the eight nations you will be visiting. This arrangement will cover all emergency hospital treatment. However, students will have to take out insurance such as multiplan to cover the costs of all visits to doctors and other non-emergency medical situations. If you have a serious accident or illness, multiplan insurance will cover the cost of your flight back to Australia, if required. Depending on the circumstances, this may also pay for either medical personnel or a family member to accompany you home. Multiplan insurance may not cover all pre-existing medical conditions so before you leave be sure to check with them about any long-term illnesses or disabilities that you have. If you do require medical treatment overseas, and you want to make a claim on your insurance, the claim will not be accepted unless you produce both your student card and your travel insurance card. 2. Belongings The Multiplan policy covers most student requirements. In particular, it provides students with luggage insurance. This covers any loss or theft of your everyday belongings. For example, this insurance covers the present value of items that are stolen provided that you have purchase receipts for every item, if no receipts, no payment can be made. Replacement value of your briefcase or backpack and study books. Portable computers and CD players, if you specifically list them as items in the policy. 3. Cancellation. This insurance covers any non-refundable deposit and other costs you have paid if you have to cancel due to unforeseen or unforeseeable circumstances outside your control. It does not provide cover if you change your study or travel plans for other reasons. Instructions Do not take this medicine on an empty stomach or immediately before lying down. If any of the following occur, discontinue taking the medicine and contact your doctor, dizziness, vomiting, blurred vision. This medicine is not available without a prescription and is not suitable for children under 5 years. Once you have begun to take this medicine you must continue to take it until the bottle is empty, unless advised otherwise by your doctor. Only one course of this medicine should be taken in a period of 6 months. Expiry date, February 16, 2004. Important Notice, Product Return Fancy Foods wishes to inform the public that pieces of metal have been found in some jars of Fancy Foods chicken curry, 
spicy. The batches of the jars involved have numbers from J6617 to J6624. Batch number is printed on the bottom of each jar. If you have any jars with these batch numbers, please return them, preferably unopened, to the supermarket where you purchased them. You can also return them to the factory, Fancy Foods Retailers, Blacktown. Fancy Foods will pay $10 for each jar returned unopened and $5 for each jar already opened. No payment will be made for empty jars, which do not need to be returned. However, the company's retailing manager will be interested to hear from people who have consumed chicken curry from any of the above batch numbers. In particular, it will be helpful if they can give information about the place of purchase of the product. Jars of Fancy Foods Chicken Curry, Coconut, and Fancy Foods Chicken Curry, Mango, have not been affected and do not need to be returned. Reward Fancy Foods will pay a reward of S10000 to $50,000 for information which leads to the conviction of any person found guilty of placing metal pieces in its products. If you have such information, please contact the Customer Relations Manager, Fancy Foods Retailers, Blacktown. Fabulous Furniture Section A Have you ever wanted to buy a small bedside table? Or a dinner table for 20 people? If you want it, we've got it. Fabulous Furniture has Australia's widest choice of furniture. Section B If you visit a Fabulous Furniture store, you can have your furniture right now using our Fabulous Furniture credit card. When you see something you really want, you can have it straight away and pay later. Section C Unlike most cards, the Fabulous Furniture credit card offers a full 60-day interest-free period on every Fabulous purchase no matter when you make your purchase. This leaves you with more money to spend on other things. Section D. You may choose to pay the full amount within 60 days. In this case, you pay no interest. You may spread your payments over a longer period. In this case, interest will be charged after the initial 60-day interest-free period. Section E. Application is absolutely free. Nor are there any annual fees or administration fees. Just fill in the application form and bring it to your nearest fabulous furniture store. Your application will be processed promptly and you can begin making purchases immediately after your application is approved. Section F. We have stores in every major city, so you're never far away from a fabulous store. For our addresses, just check in your local telephone. East Dean College East Dean is a private educational foundation funded through the Martin John Trust. It provides intensive vocational training in the traditional crafts of musical instrument making, tapestry design and weaving, and architectural glass and metalwork. It also provides a series of shorter weekend and holiday courses for the enthusiastic amateur in various crafts, taking advantage of the superb facilities offered by East Dean. Courses in Woodwork 21 to 23 April Rustic Furniture Making, Eric McKinn. 27 to 30 April Turning for Beginners, Ronald Carter. 4 to 6 May Advanced Turning, Ronald Carter. 10 to 18 May Musical Instrument Making Course. Apply for Special Brochure. 22 to 24 May Picture Framing, Martin McCarthy. 28 to 30 May Freehand Carving, Jean Atkinson. Musical Instrument Making Course. Joan Juliet, R.Z. Smith, and Gordon Smith. Course fee, £628, concessions for OAPs, students, and unemployed. This nine-day course will allow interested woodworkers to plan and make a complete musical instrument during the course of their stay, no matter what the level of their woodworking abilities. Beginner level, Appalachian Dulcimer, Renaissance Flute. Intermediate level, Modern Guitar, Violin, Bagpipes. Advanced Woodworkers, Renaissance Guitar, Bass Vial. Students are asked to bring their own woodworking tools and to mark these clearly, although a full range of power and other tools will be available. Wood for the instruments must be bought separately from tutors. The course is fully catered, but students must indicate if they wish to live in college accommodation during the course. This can be indicated on the application form. Musical Instrument Making Course Application Form Name, Brian Jones. 
Address, 6 The Elm Stanton Portsmouth, PO2, for EQ. Date of birth, March 5, 1945. What instrument do you want to make? First choice, Appalachian dulcimer. Second choice, Renaissance flute. Accommodation, single room, yes, double room, none. If you choose a double room, please indicate with whom you will be sharing. Fee paid, please enclose a check for the appropriate amount, 628 pounds. East Dean College. Accommodation information and agreement. Almost all rooms are single and with their own bathrooms. A small number of double rooms are available and these will be allocated strictly on a first-come, first-served basis. For temporary students who want to live in the college during their course, an application form must be completed. Signing and returning this form indicates agreement to the terms and conditions listed below. One dot payment for accommodation must be made in full and in advance. 2. The college accepts that reasonable wear and tear will occur, but damage beyond this is the sole responsibility of the occupant of the room, who must pay in full. 3. Guests may check in any time after midday on the day of enrollment and must check out before 10 a.m. on their day of departure. 4. Guests are expected to make themselves acquainted with the fire instructions and the location of the fire exit nearest to their room. Practice fire drills may be carried out at night. Useful names and numbers. Inquiries about charges, Mrs. Robertson, room 21. Other inquiries, Miss Smith, room 22. Porter, Mr. Ferguson, room 06. Complaints, the duty manager, room 01. A. Dot hairdressing. Ginger's unisex hair studio special. Wed and Thursday only. Color slash foils and blow wave and receive a free haircut. Inquiries to 9489-8888 Shop 5 Smith Arcade. 104 Old Northern Highway, Northland. B. Dry Cleaners. For quality and friendly service wedding and evening dresses. Duvets and blankets curtains. Woolen slash silks etc. Alterations and mending. Phone 9244-0000. Shop 1, Mandaring Shopping Center. 700 Great Eastern Highway, Mandaring. C. Good Manners Dog Training. Dog Daycare and Training Center Small Classes for All Ages. Positive Methods Qualified Trainer. O Classes in Westland and Hills. Inquiries 9244 4056 or 5419 924 133. Web www.goodmanners.net.au. D. Cleaning. A. Top Cleaning Carpet Steam Cleaning. Window cleaning 28 years. Owner operator phone 4419 924 575. E. Building services. GCH Construction Greg, qualified tradesman. Bricklaying and limestone paving and concrete. Building maintenance renovations and new homes. 6423 233 058. Construction at bigpond.com. F. Air conditioning and gas. Markham Air and Appliances Proprietary LTD. Split System Installations. Air Conditioning Service and Repairs. Appliance Service and Repair, Gas and Electric. Phone, 4468-118-491. F Pose Available. Highlights of Peru, Sightseeing Highlights. Lima, discover the city's colonial sites, including the expansive Plaza San Martin and its impressive cathedral and government palace, visit the Church of San Francisco and its catacombs. Sacred Valley, visit Awanacancha and meet llamas, vacunas and alpacas, pick up some handicrafts at the lively Paisac Market, explore the massive Inca fortress of Alenteambo. The Vistadome, ride aboard the Vistadome train to Machu Picchu, enjoy large panoramic windows, first-class service and a light meal. Insider Highlights Hidden treasures, enjoy at least one surprise hidden treasure experience, unique to your itinerary, courtesy of your expert tour director. Be my guest, join Dr. Francisco Diaz Canseco Tavara, the descendant of an old Peruvian family, for a welcome reception and typical Peruvian lunch, visit the beautiful estate and learn about the Diaz Canseco families and Peru's history. Machu Picchu, immerse yourself in the history and atmosphere of this UNESCO World Heritage Site on a guided tour and during free time for independent exploration. Cusco, delve into the city's Inca and Spanish colonial past, explore the Plaza de Armas, visit the Church of Santo Domingo in Coracancha or Temple of the Sun, explore the Citadel of Sacsayhuaman and nearby shrines and Inca warehouses. 
audio headsets, for all guided visits and included sightseeing. Local speciality visit a weaving center in the Sacred Valley to watch artisan weavers at work, on the way to Cusco, visit a chicheria and taste shishi, the traditional Andean corn beer. Local expert, meet Kike Pinto, founder and director of the Museum of Andean and Amazon Musical Instruments, for a presentation on Andean instruments and music in Cusco. Dining Highlights Welcome reception with your tour director in Lima. Seven full breakfasts. One picnic box lunch. Two three-course dinners. Farewell dinner with wine and folklore show in Cusco. Be my guest with wine in Lima. Class highlights. Includes all first-class features. A Trafalgar bonus all intra-air flights, Lima to Cusco and Cusco to Lima, including porter service at all airports. Qualified local guides in Lima, the Sacred Valley, Machu Picchu, and Cusco. Souvenir photo captures treasured memories of your trip with a complimentary group photo taken at a landmark location. Seasonal Influenza Vaccination Program Part 1. Get Vaccinated Influenza, commonly known as the flu, is caused by a virus which spreads easily from person to person through infected droplets in the air and by hands infected with the virus. The virus infects your nose, throat and, sometimes, your lungs. In most people it causes mild to moderate symptoms for about a week, but some people can develop severe illness and complications which may need to be treated in hospital and can even result in death. Flu complications include pneumonia and bronchitis. Flu can also make some underlying medical conditions worse. Flu is a vaccine-preventable disease. Because the flu virus is constantly changing, it is necessary to get vaccinated every year. The flu vaccine protects against the three strains of the virus which are most likely to occur over the winter. Vaccination is recommended in autumn to give time for immunity to develop before the flu season starts. You cannot get flu from the vaccine. Part 2. To prevent complications from flu it is recommended that people in the eligible groups outlined in this brochure get vaccinated each year. 65 years and over, people aged 65 years and over have the highest risk of complications associated with seasonal flu. Vaccination decreased hospitalization and mortality rates by up to 50 percent. Indigenous people, respiratory diseases are major causes of preventable sickness and death in indigenous people. All indigenous people are now eligible for the free flu vaccine from 15 years of age. Pregnancy, pregnant women are at higher risk of severe complications associated with the virus. The flu vaccine is safe for pregnant women, including in the first trimester. Vaccinating against flu during pregnancy also provides protection for the baby during the first vulnerable months of life. People medically at risk People with some existing medical conditions are at increased risk of complication from flu and may now be eligible for free seasonal flu vaccine. These include anyone who is over six months of age and has a condition such as heart disease, chronic respiratory conditions, chronic illness requiring medical follow-up or hospitalization in the past year, diseases of the neuromuscular system impaired immunity, or aged 6 months to 10 years and on long-term aspirin therapy. Arriving in Singapore by plane Baggage claim You can refer to the flight information television screens on level 2 for the allocation of your baggage claim belt. Free trolleys are available near all baggage claim belts and our friendly porters are at your service on request. Should you require their assistance with carrying luggage, please ask at the information desk. You can proceed to the lost and found counter for advice if you cannot find your baggage or would like to report damaged baggage. Customs Clearance Please use the green channel for your baggage clearance if you do not have controlled or prohibited items to declare or have not exceeded your duty-free concession. Please use the red channel if you have items to declare or are in doubt. Hotel Reservations you can make these at the hotel reservation counter with a 10 Singapore dollars per reservation deposit, deductible from your hotel bill at the end of your stay. These counters do not handle the transit hotels. For these, go to the reception desk on level 3. Singapore Airport Goods and Services Tax, GST, Relief A 3% Goods and Services Tax, GST, is levied on the sale of all goods imported into Singapore. If you are a visitor, returning citizen, or permanent resident of Singapore, 
you may be granted GST relief under certain conditions. Tax-free shopping. As a tourist or visitor, you can apply for a refund at customs of the 3% GST on goods purchased during your stay in Singapore, provided you shop at stores with the tax-free shopping logo. Spend a minimum amount of 100 Singapore dollars at any one shop, and at least 300 Singapore dollars in total. Obtain a global refund check from the place of purchase. When collecting your refund you have several choices cash, bank check, or Kangi Airport shopping voucher, which comes with an additional 10% in value. Please note that a handling fee will be deducted from the GST amount for the refund service. Singapore Guide A walk around the Orchard Road District The route begins just opposite the Orchard MRT station at the Singapore Marriott Hotel. This eye-catching landmark has a distinctive Chinese-styled green roof and red pillars. In 1958 a former lace peddler, C.E.K. Tang, foresaw that the area could become a bustling shopping center since residents in the neighboring Tanglin district had to pass en route to work at the commercial center, Raffles Place. So with roof tiles brought in from his hometown in the Swato province of China, Tang built a department store on what was then a cheap, isolated plot of land. The plot faced a cemetery, which is considered a bad omen in Chinese culture. His foresight paid off. Today, Tang's is one of Singapore's most prominent and recognized homegrown department stores, proudly showcasing local fashion and household products. Even when the original building was torn down in 1982 to give way to the present Superstore and Skyscraper Hotel, it retained its unique Chinese architecture. From the foyer at Tang's, turn left to Lucky Plaza. One of the oldest along Orchard Road, this mall is a perennial favorite with shoppers. Be amazed by the staggering array of cosmetics, jewelry, leather goods and hi-fi equipment. Prices, though, are not always fixed, so bring along a good set of bargaining skills. Coming out of Lucky Plaza, continue along Orchard Road and enter the Paragon Shopping Center. Apart from a wide range of shops and restaurants, there is also a Singapore Airlines Service Center to facilitate bookings and offer information to tourists. Also available are a number of computer terminals for self-booking. Check out the life-sized sculptures by a well-known Taiwanese sculptor, Sun Yu Li, outside the shopping center. These were inspired by depictions of life and rock paintings dating back 20,000 years ago in Inner Mongolia. Helping pupils to choose optional subjects When they're aged 14 to 15 What some pupils say A. Krishnan I'm studying Spanish because it's important to learn foreign languages and I'm very pleased when I can watch a video in class and understand it. Mr. Peckham really pushes us and offers us extra assignments to help us improve. That's good for me because otherwise I'd be quite lazy. B. Lucy History is my favorite subject, and it's fascinating to see how what we learn about the past is relevant to what's going on in the world now. It's made me understand much more about politics, for instance. My plan is to study history at university and maybe go into the diplomatic service so I can apply a knowledge of history. See a mark. Thursdays are my favorite days because that's when we have computing. It's the high spot of the week for me, I love learning how to program. I began when I was about eight, so when I started doing it at school, I didn't think I'd have any problem with it, but I was quite wrong. When I leave school, I'm going into my family retail business, so sadly I can't see myself becoming a programmer. Dia Violeta My parents both work in leisure and tourism, and they've always talked about their work a lot at home. I find it fascinating. I'm studying it at school, and the teacher is very knowledgeable, though I think we spend too much time listening to her. I'd like to meet more people working in the sector and learn from their experience. E. Walid. E. Walid. I've always been keen on art, so I chose it as an optional subject, though I was afraid the lessons might be a bit dull. I needn't have worried, though our teacher gets us to do lots of fun things, so there's no risk of getting bored. At the end of the year the class puts on an exhibition for the school, and I'm looking forward to showing some of my work to other people. It's almost time for the next Ripton Festival. As usual, the festival will be held in the last weekend of June, this year on Saturday to Monday, 27 to 29 June. 
Ever since last year's festival, the committee has been hard at work to make this year's the best ever. The theme is Ripton through the ages. Scenes will be acted out showing how the town has developed since it was first established. But there's also plenty that's up to date, from the latest music to local crafts. The craft fair is a regular part of the festival. Come and meet professional artists, designers and craftsmen and women, who will display their jewelry, paintings, ceramics, and much more. They'll also take orders, so if you want one of them to make something especially for you, just ask. You'll get it within a month of the festival ending. The Saturday barbecue will start at 2 p.m. and continue until 10 p.m., with a bouncy castle for kids. The barbecue will be held in Palmer's Field, or in the town hall if there's rain. Book your tickets now, as they always sell out very quickly. Entry for under 16s is free all day, adults can come for free until 6 p.m. and pay £5 after that. There will be live music throughout, with local amateur bands in the afternoon and professional musicians in the evening. On Sunday we're delighted to introduce an afternoon of boat races, arranged by the Ripton Rowing Club. The spectator area by the bridge has plenty of room to stand and cheer the boats home, in addition to a number of benches. The winners of the races will be presented with trophies by the mayor of Ripton. All money raised by the festival will go to support the sports clubs in Ripton. It's almost time for the next Ripton Festival. Outdoor activities for all the family. At Perry Forest. Our walks cater for all ages and all degrees of fitness, and are suitable for children as well as adults. Every Saturday and Sunday throughout the year our experts lead several walks. So whether you want a short stroll on level ground, or a more challenging walk to the top of Shepherd's Hill, we have something for you. Be a Pugsley Beach Nature Reserve. The reserve has plenty of wildlife, whatever the time of year, with its numerous species of birds, and plants that grow hardly anywhere else, but the autumn is when hundreds of gray seals arrive on the beach to have their young. The covered viewing area offers spectacular close-up views of all this, and hot drinks and snacks are available to help you keep warm. See Marston Hall. If you ever wonder what wildlife trusts do for the environment, come to Marston Hall, where our rangers will show you how they manage wildlife habitats, from providing feeding boxes for squirrels to creating ponds for frogs and many other creatures. They'll also take you on a short walk through the ancient pine forest in search of animal tracks and signs. D. Craven Discovery Center Here at the Discovery Center, youngsters are introduced to the animals in our petting zoo, where they can stroke or feed the sheep, rabbits, ponies and other residents. Then they're taken on a walk through the wood. Meanwhile, the adults can take part in one of our woodland activities, such as learning basic woodworking skills. E. Shelford Family Wild Outing Go birdwatching or catch insects as daylight fades, then have a gentle jog along the river whale by moonlight, and end by toasting marshmallows on a campfire. It's all part of a family wild outing in Shelford, organized by the local wildlife trust. Ideal for both adults and children. F. Garston Park Come to Garston Park when the sun has set and explore the solar system. Ideal for children and their parents who are interested in astronomy. Our experts will help you to find your way among the stars, and then we gather in the visitor center for refreshments. Please note that events are cancelled if the weather is cloudy. Hinchingbrook School 6th Form Hinchingbrook School consists of the lower school, for students aged 11 to 16, and the 6th Form, for ages 16 to 18 plus. In the 6th Form we provide a strong program of guidance for students, whether they are planning on going to university, into training, or straight into the workplace. We have a high rate of success with applications to universities, including growing success in recent years for medical school applicants. While the majority of sixth form students enter from the lower school, recent significant expansion of the sixth form is largely the result of an increase in applicants from other schools in the area. We pride ourselves on giving these external students a particularly warm welcome. We welcome your interest in joining our sixth form and look forward to offering you a place if you satisfy our minimum entry requirements. If you are an internal student, please apply through the MyChoice 16 application system. This is also where external students need to view course information. If you are an external student whose current school does not use MyChoice 16 for online applications, please see our website for an application form to the school. We hold an annual open evening in the autumn term when you can come and view our facilities and ask any questions you may have. Care, guidance and support in the sixth form at Hinchingbrook is something of which we are very proud, and each of our students is treated as an individual. 
you will be assigned a professional sixth form tutor who will provide you with support and guidance and will be responsible for helping you make sensible choices about your future career path. You will meet with your tutor at a fixed time every fortnight to discuss progress and any concerns you or your subject teachers may have about your effort and achievement. You will also set targets for yourself in agreement with your tutor and subject teachers and your progress towards achieving these targets will be monitored in your tutor meetings. Use of university grounds by vehicular traffic. The university grounds are private. The university authorities only allow authorized members of the university, visitors and drivers of vehicles servicing the university to enter the grounds. Members of staff who have paid the requisite fee and display the appropriate permit may bring a vehicle into the grounds. A university permit does not entitle them to park in hall car parks, however, unless authorized by the warden of the hall concerned. Students may not bring vehicles into the grounds during the working day unless they have been given special permission by the security officer and have paid for and are displaying an appropriate entry permit. Students living in halls of residence must obtain permission from the warden to keep a motor vehicle at their residence. Students are reminded that if they park a motor vehicle on university premises without a valid permit, they will be fined £20. Patient Information Leaflet the name of your medicine is Borodine tablets. What are Borodine tablets used for? Borodine tablets are used to help relieve hay fever and conditions due to allergies, in particular, skin reactions and a runny nose. It is not recommended that Borodine tablets are given to children under 12 years of age or pregnant or breastfeeding women. Before you take Borodine tablets. In some circumstances, it is very important not to take Borodine tablets. If you ignore these instructions, this medicine could affect your heart rhythm. Are you taking oral medicines for fungal infections? Have you suffered a reaction to medicines containing boradine before? Do you suffer from any liver, kidney, or heart disease? If the answer to any of these questions is yes, do not take boradine tablets before consulting your doctor. After taking boradine tablets. Boradine tablets, like many other medicines, may cause side effects in some people. If you faint, stop taking boradine tablets and tell your doctor immediately. In addition, boradine tablets may cause problems with your vision, hair loss, depression or confusion, yellowing of your skin or your eyes. If you have these effects whilst taking boradine tablets, tell your doctor immediately. Other side effects are dizziness or headaches, and indigestion or stomachache. However, these effects are often mild and usually wear off after a few days' treatment. If they last for more than a few days. Gender Equality a. It is a question officials here in Asia are being posed more and more, why are your economies so vibrant? Answers include young and swelling populations, decreased debt, growing cities, emerging middle-class consumer sectors, evolving markets and, of course, China's rise. Add this to that list, women and their increasing role in Asia's economies. The idea is that the more opportunities women have, the more vibrant economies are and, consequently, the less need there is to amass a huge public debt to boost growth. It is an idea bolstered by a new survey by MasterCard International Incorporated, which compares the socio-economic level of women with men in Asia-Pacific nations. The gauge uses four key indicators, participation in the labor force, college education, managerial positions, and above-median income. B. Which Asian nation is doing host when it comes to women's advancement? Thailand. It scored 92.3 of a possible 100, and according to MasterCard's index, 100 equals gender equality. The survey was based on interviews with 300 to 350 women in 13 nations and national statistics. Malaysia came in second with a score of 86.2, while China came in third with 68.4. The average score in Asia was 67.7. At the bottom of the list is Korea, 45.5, followed by Indonesia, 52.5, and Japan, 54.5. Perhaps it is a bizarre coincidence, yet MasterCard's findings fit quite neatly with two important issues in Asia, economic leadership and debt. Thailand, Malaysia, and China are three economies widely seen as the future of Asia. Thailand's economic boom in recent years has prompted many leaders in the region to look at its growth strategy. Malaysia, which has a female central bank governor, is one of Asia's rising economic powers. China, of course, is the world's hottest economy, and one that is shaking up trade patterns and business decisions everywhere. See, something all three economies have in common is an above-average level of female participation. What the three worst-ranked economies share are severe long-term economic challenges of high levels of debt and a female workforce that is being neglected. Research in economic history is very conclusive on the role of women in economic growth and development, says Yua Hedrick Wong, an economic advisor to MasterCard. 
The more extensive women's participation at all areas of economic activities, the higher the probability for stronger economic growth. That, Hedrick Wong says, means societies and economies that consistently fail to fully incorporate women's ability and talent in businesses, and the workplace will suffer the consequences. Take Korea, which has been walking in place economically in recent years. Immediately following the 1997-1998 Asian financial crisis, Korea became a regional role model as growth boomed and unemployment fell. Yet a massive increase in household debt left consumers overexposed and growth slowed. D. Maybe it is a just coincidence that Korea also ranks low on measures of gender equality published by the United Nations. As of 2003, for example, it ranked below Honduras, Paraguay, Mauritius, and Ukraine in terms of women's economic and political empowerment. Utilizing more of its female workforce would deepen Korea's labor pool and increase potential growth rates in the economy. The same goes for Japan. The reluctance of Asia's biggest economy to increase female participation and let more women into the executive suite exacerbates its biggest long-term challenge, a declining birth rate. In 2003, the number of children per Japanese woman fell to a record low of 1.29 versus about 2 in the early 1970s. Preliminary government statistics suggest the rate declined further in 2004. The trend is nothing short of a crisis for a highly indebted nation of 126 million that has yet to figure out how to fund the national pension system down the road. Yet Japan has been slow to realize that for many women, the decision to delay childbirth is a form of rebellion against societal expectations to have children and become housewives. E. It may be 2005, yet having children is a career-ending decision for millions of bright, ambit ions, and well-educated Japanese, until corrected, Japan's birth rate will drop and economic growth will lag, UN Secretary General Kofi Annan was absolutely right earlier this month when he said no other policy is as likely to raise economic productivity than the empowerment of women. Here, in Thailand, the government is getting some decent marks in this regard, and the economy's 6% plus growth rate may be a direct result. Thailand still has a long way to go. Yet the Bank of Thailand's deputy governor, Tarisa Watanagase, is a woman, as are seven of nine assistant governors. Then there's Jada Watanasiratham, who runs Siam Commercial Bank PLC, Thailand's fourth biggest lender. How many female chief executives can you name in Japan or Korea? Looked at broadly in Asia, MasterCard survey is on to something. It is that giving women more opportunities to contribute to an economy is not just about fairness, but dollars and cents, too. Water Wise Rebates This government scheme encourages homeowners to use water more wisely. You can now receive generous rebates if you buy any of these water-saving products for your home. Water-efficient showerhead, everyone takes showers, but some showerheads are much better at regulating the flow of water, and this can build up considerable water savings. If you purchase a low-flow showerhead with a rating of 3 stars or more, you can claim up to $30. Dual flush toilet, dual flush toilets enable you to make considerable savings in water use. If you replace your current single flush system with a dual flush toilet suite with a star rating of 3 stars or more, you are eligible for a rebate of $150. Water-efficient garden goods, certain types of mulch or soil improver products help to improve the water retention qualities of your soil and this reduces the amount of watering that you need to do on hot, dry summer days. If you buy water-efficient garden goods, you are eligible for a rebate of up to $200. Rainwater tanks. Rainwater tanks help you to build up a secondary store of water for your garden, or even for your home in an emergency. If you buy and fit a plumbed-in rainwater tank, connected to your house, of a minimum of 3,000 liters capacity you are eligible for rebates of between 200 and 1,000. For full terms and conditions and how to apply. Phone 1-800-888-900. How to shop green. Considering going green? You're probably not the only one. Enter almost any grocery store and you're bound to find so-called green cleaning products next to traditional ones. Take Tide Cold Water Detergent. Procter & Gamble claims it deep cleans clothes in cold water, cutting down on your energy use, not to mention your energy bill. Car buyers have plenty of environmentally friendly models from which to choose, and energy-efficient appliances get prominent placement on showroom floors. Even retailers are getting in on the act. Sweden-based fashion emporium H&M introduced a green line in spring 2007, offering frocks and tops made with organic cotton. But while an ever-growing range of green consumer products are finding their way into our homes, there is very little in the way of industry standard. One manufacturer's green product may have been produced in an entirely different manner than another's. As a result, experts say it's good to maintain a healthy dose of skepticism when choosing environmentally friendly products, and to rely on a select group of organizations monitoring the practices of certain industries. Do your homework, dig a bit and you'll likely come across the word greenwashing. This, according to Julia Cosgrove, deputy editor of ReadyMade, a San Francisco-based magazine that focuses on do-it-yourself, sustainable projects, entails marketing a product as environmentally conscious without enough evidence that it really is. Much of what we're seeing now is just spin, she says. When you look further, many of these companies are still making a big environmental footprint. Translation, even if a retailer offers clothes made with organic cotton, chances are they are being shipped via huge, gas-sucking airplanes. Another example is vinyl. It is used in a great deal of vegan shoes, but the production of the material can create dioxin, a known carcinogen. Clothing company Aduin has experienced a case of greenwashing. Although some of its products are made of organic cotton, the company's main objective is to produce ethical, fairly traded, socially responsible, not green clothing. 
Although both concepts are positive, they certainly don't mean the same thing. Aduan is an ethical clothing company, and although they take measures to protect the environment, they should not be categorized as green. How to tell one from the other? Look to several watchdog organizations for a real education. Digging Deeper, Netherlands-based made by Traxa Garments Environmental Footprint from the first thread on, and the International Forest Stewardship Alliance certifies wood-made products by ensuring that manufacturers collecting lumber are making the best use of forest resources, reducing damage and waste, and avoiding overconsumption and overharvesting. You can find a complete listing of their findings on www.fscs.org. The Environmental Protection Agency's EPA labeling system, designed for the environment, DFA, ensures that the chemicals in DFE-certified products like Earth Choice's new range of household cleaners are environmentally preferable, which means such products are created with lower volatile organic compounds. High levels of these materials can damage soil and groundwater, and emit greenhouse gases, contributing to global warming. Kitchen appliances now possess one of the most widely recognized labels, Energy Star, another EPA-run unit. These labels ensure an appliance meets energy-efficient guidelines set by the EPA and the Department of Energy. Criteria for each appliance differs and can be found on www.energystar.gov under the Products tab. It's a fairly well-known metric that will reduce your energy use and save you money, says Ron Jones, founder of Green Builder, a development, media, and consulting firm dedicated to sustainable development and green building of Energy Star. Often, buying a new, energy-saving air conditioner will save you in the end since older models not only cost more to run but often don't work as well. Whether you're buying one piece of green clothing or remodeling your entire home with energy-efficient appliances, Jones says it's important to note how your everyday activities affect the environment. If you start to look at a person in terms of their individual footprint, which includes their transportation habits, eating habits, clothing and housing, it starts to get very complex, he says. Think through everything. Determine how it will affect your everyday living conditions and your quality of life going forward.